Some of the most feared aircraft in the inventory, feared by the Germans on the ground, because they performed an artillery spotter role. That was the most common use. They were also used to haul people around in the theater of operations, to haul supplies or wounded. But their primary mission was to call in artillery support. They could fly right up to the edge of the battle line and even a mile or two beyond it. If Safe. And a few thousand feet so that they could look down and identify where the enemy was located. When the artillery shells would come roaring in, they'd call in real time how close they were to the target. So with those minor corrections, there was a devastating effect on the enemy. And if you compare, A heavy bomber might make two or three trips a week into the target area, spend about one minute over the target area, and from an altitude of 20,000 feet, drop his bombs and be lucky to get 10% of a 5,000 pound bomb load within a half mile of the aiming point. That means that, for example, if the factory was over there on the civilian side of the airport, over there by the white control tower. And the bombs were hitting where we are. That's quite a distance from where we are over to that tower. But that would be considered on target. And that's why they would get so few bombs on target. They would send out 700 bombers and 500 fighters on a mission. I finally figured that somebody was going to be able to hit something sometime. The Army Air Force Force estimated that they sent out 60 bombers and risked the lives of 600 men for every bomb that actually hit the target. Now compare that to the use of these little airplanes as spotting aircraft. Each one could make typically three flights a day. It's been an hour over the target every, every time. As they went up, they could call in a hundred tons of high explosives every hour and have them land within 50 yards of the target whenever they needed to. The Germans were so afraid of the little tub that in 1945, when they were so desperate for men, they offered a 10-day furlough to anyone who could bring one down. 2,300 of them were sent out in the European theater of operations for artillery spotting. Over 900 of those 2,300 were lost. One German Panzer officer, the tank officer, captured after the Normandy breakout, told his American captains, we cursed the little green high-wing airplane. We knew that one of them in the area would precede a barrage. We tried our hardest to shoot them down. We dreaded those little observation airplanes. They were the angels of death to us. Piper Cup, a rocket L3, since an L5, 
All the small birds, called L birds, weren't even ours. However, the pilots were armed. They carried 45 caliber pistols, sidearm. And in fact, the last shoot down of a Luftwaffe aircraft in the war. when two pilots of the Piper L-4 spotted a German Dieseler Stork. A German liaison airplane. And they took out their 45s and stuck them out the window and they shot down the Dieseler Stork. Just after the after VE day, so the war was over. They still shot this airplane down and it goes on record as the last shoot down of a Luftwaffe aircraft in World War II. Now we're going And although they tried to shoot them down, these are airplanes that are covered in fabric. The wings and the fuselage are covered in fabric. The bullets would go right through it. And unless they really hit the critical part of the engine, the airplane would keep flying and get back home. High-speed fighter aircraft would overshoot the grasshopper. They were called grasshoppers because in the early days when the Army was trying to figure out if they really wanted to have these airplanes, they had field trials down in Tennessee, and out of the fields, these little airplanes were showing what they could do, particularly as artillery spotters. And the one general that was watching this watched uh, a fairly bumpy landing on one of the aircraft, and he said, they jump around the field like grasshoppers. Well, the name stuck, and it stuck to any of the liaison aircraft, the light aircraft used for this purpose, able to take off just about anywhere. They were also very, very effective as airborne ambulances because they could land right where the injured were out of the field, load them on board, and off they go to the hospital. In one of the press Very smooth, very nice takeoff by the D-17. Call Ops 2, tell them they got to break the fence down up here. And our elders are going to land, 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 land